Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're testing an old $300 Core i7 and comparing it with a modern Core i7, the 10700F, which I've replaced the i5 with currently in my system for the purpose of this video. So back in 2013, the fourth gen 4770 came in at around $300 in the US. I think it was about the same price here in the UK as well. And the 10700F these days is another good chip to go for if you want an i7 and you don't mind not having integrated graphics. So for this test, I actually borrowed my sister's PC. I upgraded it with 16 gigs of RAM not long ago and replaced the i5 in that system with the 4770, which I picked up for just 50 pounds on eBay. So I've uh, removed it from her room for the purpose of this video, of course, but I don't think she'll actually notice. Anyway, we're gonna be- Where's my computer? Now we're testing both of these chips, first of all at 1080p, what I call the most popular resolution, because according to the Steam hardware survey, this is still the most commonly used resolution. And then we'll also be throwing up a few tests with what I'm gonna call the next gen or current gen resolution, which is 4K, just so you can see whether or not the gap in performance closes or you know gets even bigger when it comes to running a few of these games. Now pairing the 4770 with the 3070 is probably more uh, unrealistic, but it does allow us to see what this CPU can really do. Of course, the 3070 is equivalent to a 2080 Ti, and for testing CPUs, it's ideal to try and maximize the performance by using a graphics card like this. The 10700F, on the other hand, is probably much better suited to the 3070. So let's start off at 1080p. Now, obviously, with the i7 10700F, we have DDR4 clocked at 2666 megahertz, and with the i7 4770, we have DDR3 clocked at 18 66 megahertz this is simply because you know if you buy a chip on a newer platform you're going to get the ddr4 memory we could underclock it to match the ddr3 but i don't really think there's a point because it's not representative of a real world scenario if we jump into the 1080p tests first and starting with call of duty black ops cold war i've put the 4770 gameplay up on the screen because when it comes to these cpu comparisons i always like to show the weaker chips gameplay just so you get a sense of how well it actually holds up the 4770 is averaging 84 with a one percent low of 52 and with the new 10700f we are seeing 122 frames per second on average with a one percent low that matches the 4770's average of about 83 84 so yeah both chips are still obviously very good well the 10700F is obviously doing a good job, but the 4770 at 1080p is holding up very well. So you aren't necessarily getting a bad experience with the 4770 in 2020. It's just that you are being held back by probably the four cores and eight threads. I think four core and eight threaded CPUs are still fine, absolutely. But as we move forward, I think we're going to see six cores become the new norm. And it is six cores that would probably help out a bit more in the most modern of titles. This is still a pretty good experience though with the older chip. Now if we move on to Crisis Remastered, again with the high settings and all ray tracing effects off here, the 4770 is seeing 79 frames per second on average, so you are getting a plus 60 FPS experience pretty much in all of today's tested games, bar one, uh, which was Watch Dogs Legion, but we'll get onto that a little later on. The 10700F is giving us an average of 113 with a 1% low of 60. So again, both chips do offer a nice experience. The older chip will still net you a decent overall frame rate, but you are being limited by the CPU itself if you were to pair it with a GPU like this, which is probably unlikely. Um, I'd recommend perhaps a 2060 at most, you know, if you do want to put together something that doesn't cost as much, but you're still getting a good experience. And when we get onto the 4K results a little later on, you'll see that the 4770 holds up, well, even better than it does at 1080. Now, Mafia Definitive Edition, uh, again with the high settings here, did very well with the 4770, 91 FPS with a 44 FPS 1% low. In comparison to the i7 10700F, we were seeing 120 and 73 respectively. So again, 
the 4770 is holding up rather well here considering this is a seven year old 300 dollar 300 pound chip that can now be picked up for less than 100 in both of those currencies yeah it's really not too bad at all in red dead redemption 2 then we were just wandering around the emerald ranch area and again plus 80 fps was no trouble for the i7 4770 we also saw a 1% low of 64 so this also reflects a pretty smooth frame rate that was relatively free of stutters i have noticed though in red dead redemption 2 that it doesn't care an awful amount about your processor so as long as you have more than four cores it's far more gpu intensive and you'll see even higher end cards hitting 90 to 100 percent usage in a lot of situations when it comes to turning the settings right up we were just at high here pretty much everything was on high and i didn't have anything on ultra so rainbow six siege here with the ultra preset the 4770 hit 231 fps with a one percent low of 167 with the i7 10700f we were seeing at least 300 fps with both of the benchmark figures the average and the one percent low again this is to be expected with modern hardware, but I still think it goes to show that the 4770 is holding up rather well and could potentially be paired with one of these cards to achieve more than 60 FPS, although you probably are wasting a bit of money if you go with a 3070 and an i7 4770, to be honest. As I said before, a 2060 or 1080, something like that would be a much better choice. Now, Watch Dogs Legion is our final 1080p result and here is where the 4770 struggled we weren't able to achieve 60 fps but this is an ubisoft game Watch Dogs legion is very cpu intensive and i think here is a prime example of where an extra two cores would probably come in handy we're seeing 46 on average with a one percent low of 32 and the 10700f which of course has eight cores and 16 threads was able to hit at least 100 fps with a one percent low of 60. Now if we move on to some 2160p or 4k results again with the same configurations then what's actually really interesting is just how the gap closes between the two. Now what I've done here is picked a few games and starting with Crisis Remastered which isn't the best at utilising CPU power. At 2160p we actually saw the exact same result with the 4770 and 10700F because here we are now GPU limited. At 2160p the RTX 3070 does start to struggle in some of these games when we turn the settings right up and this becomes the limiting factor. The 4770 is therefore able to hold its own when it comes to Ultra HD gaming and although you will still see a difference in other games but it's not as big of a difference as we were seeing previously for example if we move on to rainbow six siege the 4770 is hitting 122 fps with a one percent low of 104 but with the 10700f we're only seeing about 16 frames higher on average with a average of 138 and a one percent low of 20 so yeah a pretty good result here at 4k for the 4770 i've got to admit finally then if we go back to Watch Dogs legion a notoriously cpu intensive new release then the results are still quite different i mean we're seeing 10 11 frames per second difference here but the gap once again does close and the 4770 is hitting 39 fps on average with a 1% low of 25 and the 10700F is hitting 51 with a 1% low of 39. Again here, this makes the GPU the limiting factor because at 4K with ultra settings the 3070 does start to struggle. With all that said and done then, I think the 4770 is still a pretty good buy if you are on a tighter budget. I just wanted to make this comparison really just to see how far i7s have come in like 7 or so years. If you were to buy something at the same price point as an older chip cost, you know the 10700F is a 300 US dollar part. Same as the 4770 was back in its day. And it's interesting to see just how far we've come in terms of these processors. More than anything though, it's always just for a bit of fun and I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.